Here are 10 fantastic American TV shows that you can watch to improve your English. Number one, Game of Thrones. Now, I don't need to tell you about Game of Thrones. I'm sure you've seen it. But if you haven't, it's a fantasy drama that is winning every award there is. Now, why is it so good for learning English? Well, first of all, the accents. Now, these are British accents that they use, and you get a variety of different British accents. Now, I know this is an American TV show, but in this case, there is a bit of British English. So you have a, a variety of British accents. You also have some vocabulary that's quite tricky, to be honest. Now, what I would suggest is that you watch it with a dictionary or a translator just to help you out with any sort of tricky words that you encounter. Now, Game of Thrones embodies everything that I think is important about learning English. And that is that you learn English through the things that you love. Now, millions of people love Game of Thrones. And I believe that you should learn English through your passions, your interests, whatever they may be. So start watching Game of Thrones, get addicted. You'll be consuming so much English that it will inevitably improve your, your English. Your listening, your uh, vocabulary, your speaking as well. I think it's a great idea. Number two is an absolute classic, Friends. Now this TV series is slightly older than the other ones I'm recommending today, but it's just so good that I couldn't uh, leave it off the list. It's about five friends who live in New York City and we follow their relationships, their friendships, their work problems. Now there are three reasons why I love friends to learn English. First of all, it's quite clear. They're, so the accents are very clear to understand. Um, you're also going to get fantastic natural conversations and dialogue, whether it's an argument or just a debate about something. Um, they're, re they're really well written and very naturally written. So the conversation, the language that you're going to get is, is really everyday English. Uh, thirdly, I think personally that Friends is brilliant with intonation. The writers use intonation really cleverly to play with the meaning of their sentences. So for example, there's a character called Joey and he has a catchphrase which is, how you doing? How you doing? And he stresses the you. He's taking a normal sentence, how are you doing? And it's becoming a kind of chat up line, which is quite funny in the context. So they use intonation really clearly to change the meaning of words. And intonation became a huge part of why Friends was so iconic. It was because of the way that the characters said their lines. Number three isn't one show, it's actually a number of shows. And it is American talk shows. Now you can get them on YouTube for free. And they are bite-sized clips of famous American talk shows. For example, The Ellen Show, The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, and The Late Late Show with James Corden. Now, why are they so good? Well, there's a number of reasons. First of all, they are bite-sized, which means they're short clips. So you can watch one on the bus or on the train. Secondly, they are all subtitled, so you have some support for your listening. Thirdly, because they are new and they're every day, you can keep up to date with American culture, what's going on. Each one features a famous film star or a musician, so you're keeping up with what's new in American culture that way. Uh, the conversations are fantastic. You'll get lots of question forms, particularly from the hosts, and then you'll get lots of stories from the guests. So you've got question forms, past tenses, narrative tenses, a range of English language. And I think it's a great way to keep up to date with what's going on at the time in America. What, what are the important stories? What are they talking about? Which films are out? Which songs are popular? Um, po politically, you'll hear interesting things. I think talk shows are a brilliant window into American culture. Number four, Breaking Bad. Again, this is another really addictive TV program. It's about a teacher that becomes a drug dealer. There's a lot more to it than that, but that's the essential story. Now, this one maybe isn't to watch with children. Uh, there's a lot of great slang vocabulary, so um, great conversations. I mean, it's so well written that, yeah, the dialogue is just so rich in interesting vocabulary, expressions, phrases, as I said, slang language. This is, this is one that you will love, I promise. Number five, Suits. This is an American legal drama set in New York. Now, it's very fast-paced and very compelling. 
So you're really gonna get drawn into the story with this one. Now, obviously you've got a lot of legal vocabulary, so if that's something you're interested in, then fantastic. It's also very clear, so the accents that you're gonna hear are pretty, pretty clear, probably quite easy to understand, although it is quite fast paced. So you might need to rewind, stop it, start it, whatever you need to do to, to maintain your understanding. And again, you're gonna get some really well-written dialogue and conversation between the characters. Number six is New Girl, and this is uh, a group of friends in LA. Again, quite young, probably in their 20s, just living their lives, their relationships, their friendships, uh, that kind of thing. And it's really fast-paced, so it's quick, very witty. There's a lot of jokes flying around. You have to be quite alert to, uh, to kind of get the jokes. Um, but once you get used to the way they talk and the characters and, and the context, it'll become easier to understand what's going on. So thematically, they talk about everyday problems, relationships, struggles with work, things like that. So you're gonna get a lot of vocabulary that relates to everyday life, which I think is, is really important for you guys. I think because it's quite a new program, you're gonna get a nice model for how sort of young people speak in America, the kind of phrases they'll use, the intonation, the sentence structures, stuff like that. So I think it's quite a good example of modern American English. Again, the accents are quite clear as well, so that really helps when you're trying to understand what's going on. Number seven is a personal favorite of mine, Silicon Valley. The story is all about a company that's trying to get funding to grow bigger. Now, it's a young tech company, so what you're gonna get is vocabulary related to technology, to business and to startup culture and entrepreneurship. So there's loads of really fantastic vocabulary that you can learn if that's something that you're interested in. Again, I think the accents are quite clear and it's also an interesting kind of window into Silicon Valley, like where Google and Facebook and YouTube, all those companies, where they're based. So it's a really interesting kind of cultural experience to kind of understand the way that these tech companies work. Number eight is a comedy called Modern Family. And this is a very contemporary view on what American family looks like today. So uh, you've got some very culturally interesting stuff going on here. It's really well written again. So the dialogues are fast, they're funny, uh, they're punchy, they're full of interesting vocabulary. Uh, you've got some great characters and relationships going on. So it's, it's a really enjoyable TV series to watch. And again, you're gonna get great new vocabulary, modern vocabulary. So you're gonna get expressions to give opinions, to argue, to disagree. Yeah, it's a really, it's a fast, funny program to watch. Number nine, House of Cards. This is a political drama set in Washington. Uh, here you're gonna get some really interesting um, language because some of it is very informal. You're gonna get quite a lot of swear words and rude language. On the other side, you're gonna get more formal stuff, like more political language. So you've got both sides, formal and informal. The conversations are fast paced again, they're witty, they're natural, so um, all those things are great for you to kind of understand. Uh, it's also really a really fascinating window into the political world in America, kind of getting to understand how it all works, and yeah, it's absolutely fascinating, especially in this era where we have Donald Trump and, uh, and other interesting politicians. It's a fascinating look into that world. And of course your topic vocabulary will be about politics and about business as well. And the last one on this list, How I Met Your Mother. This is a hugely popular program. And I know that a lot of my students over the years have loved this program. It's again, just a group of friends hanging out, just chatting, everyday conversations about their problems, about their lives, and it features informal vocabulary and phrases, expressions, slang language. Um, it's witty, very funny. There's so much to enjoy here. And what's nice is that each episode is kind of um, compact, so you can just watch one episode and you don't need to watch the one before or the one after. You'll get the idea about what's going on and who the characters are. So yeah, I really recommend watching How I Met Your Mother. All right, I know that I've missed out so many fantastic TV programs. The list that I was preparing was huge, and then I had to pick 10 that I thought were, were the best, but you guys can tell me in the comments below which ones did I uh, miss out, which ones would you recommend other Eat Sleep Dreamers watch, uh, which ones are your favorites? So let me know in the comments below. If you haven't seen it yet, I've done a similar video about 10 British TV shows that you should watch. 
to learn English. I'll link that just above me right now. And I'll also do a special video about how to use TV programs to learn English. So what should you be doing whilst you're watching the program? That is coming up really soon, guys. Remember, I've got new videos every Tuesday and every Friday teaching you fresh modern English so that you can take your English to the next level. I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. Please give it a massive thumbs up, share it with your friends, and remember to subscribe so you don't miss one single video. This is Tom, the Chief Dreamer, saying goodbye.